Okay, let's uh, let's just do a recap on where we've got up to at the moment. You saw three techniques laid down, techniques or whether or whatever you want to call them. We started off with the filter, and the filter was to align all these different colours together, and also to sort of draw that grey effect that we saw in the photographs. And then we've gone into the oils, and um, the first thing we did is. I think the best description is what Mike Rinaldi calls it, oil paint rendering. Now this isn't true oil paint rendering in the way that he does, he does a very, um, he calls it simple but I call it much more complex because the way he works his oils is he'll actually just take say one section like one side of the vehicle and he'll bring that all the way through everything. He'll work with oil paints and a palette, he'll bring one part of the vehicle all the way up to where he wants it and use that as the base for how he does the rest of the vehicle i'm not doing that i find that a little bit too complex for myself but we sort of adhere to the same sort of methods it, most of uh armor modelers aircraft models whoever that are more inclined to using oils for their weathering uh, tend to use the similar technique so the first one was simply um, the filter. The filter was made with oils because I haven't got a proprietary product, and you can make them with enamels, and it's it's no big deal. But we we brought it to a um, I think they call it a homogeneous color or, or whatever. But basically, because we had a we wanted to overlay a filter of color that was grey as per the references, and just brought everything into tune. So that was the very first step, and it. And also, I'm sure when you lay down that first set of colour, it helps bind what comes next. I'm, I'm pretty much convinced of that. Now, the second thing we did, like we said, like oil paint rendering, we added variations to different areas. You can see them, they're still drawn out, they're subtle. And why do you use oil paints for that? There are other ways to do that. Of course, I, if you're very skilled, you can do them with acrylics, actually. But uh, And that's what figure painters do. But why don't we use, like, these, for example, which is a ready-made weathering set that it, it contains enamel washes, um, two types, a wash, a streaking grime, and also some uh, pigments as well. So you'll see the products often in many many videos but nobody's really explaining why they're using them or in my case why I am not using them and they really have got their place believe me um, but the the big element here no matter what it's there's a couple of factors that vary between oils and enamels between these proprietary products and what we're doing which is um, basically tube oil paint or those new um, the new oil brushes they're an oil paint medium that's what we've been using and we'll continue to use in this build now I'm not saying we won't use these in the future or that these these can can join in but the main reason we use these oil paints it's their specific properties and the first one is that they're translucent they actually have they're not they're not totally opaque if they're applied in thin filters so you you actually get a a non-opaque effect so you can build up your effect in very small layers there isn't 
a mass of paint going on top that's obliterating what's underneath. It's complementing it. Now, the other feature as well, and this is this is this is the prime one. It's it's that they're also they're very persistent. In that, I mean that when you lay down the oils, um, you can move them around continually over time using the thinners, using terps, and you can push them into position, you can draw them out, you can fade them, you can create transitions, and also, primarily, you can blend colours together using the oil paints. And the working time on them is much longer, so you can lay down oils with other oils, and you can blend the effects maybe over a period of, I'd say, maybe a two or three hour period but really really you, you want to be doing it within the hour is ideal before things are drying out especially if you're using the enamel thinners the oils will dry out quicker than the terps and of course there's other people that use other mediums to make them even last longer so you, you've got that advantage in working time and also the fact that they're not removed in one swipe um, using thinners or, or other uh, solvents so that's that's where how we've laid that down now of course we did use proprietary products we used the the weather and color wash and that was a pin wash that we did to draw out the detail and also I mean when we draw out the detail we tend to segre segregate out areas like for instance the wash went into the recess here it went across this weld line across here and we start to see the it's the actual it's a geometrical breakup of the vehicle and these are going to be areas of further weathering your eye is going to go into areas where weathering and natural effects would accumulate so those base layers and that's, that's what I think I call it I call it like the first pass oil technique is pretty straightforward it, it's it's not entirely mechanical but it is somewhat in that it's like a process but the next stage of what we're going to do is is a lot more um, I'm not going to say it's technical but it, it tends to be um, it tends to have an artistic element to it and anybody who says it doesn't they're, they're lying because what you're doing you're combining what we're going to be doing is, is environmental effects we're going to be adding the effects of dirt rain wear and tear those effects of nature on the vehicle but they won't be uh they're going to be laid down in a semi-artistic manner that's the best way i can put it so this is where things get a little bit more maybe a bit more tricky really because but also this is where things really open up this is where you've got your chance uh for the model to start telling its story to the viewer which is really <laughs> what this is all about you're going to convey something to who looks at this model be it it's out of action be it it's had some hard use be it it's on a parade ground you're going to start telling that story through what we do next so uh let's crack on with it okay let's talk about the palette selection the oil paints i'm going to use and uh if it looks like a goddamn mess it's because it is uh, yeah, these paints have uh, really done a couple of rounds um, But I sort of know what they are and uh, I'll explain each one. We're gonna go for environmental color So we're talking about mud dust the effects of nature on the vehicle and I think the first choice will be Mud uh, most most of these are Abtai long 502 paints. You've seen they've been in the collection for quite a while Unfortunately, I've lost some of the tops. 
Um, this color here is German three tone fading. It is pretty damn amazing as a filter as well. It just seems to really work well when you have a combination of camo colors. We may or may not use that. We'll put it on the palette anyways and see how that develops. Might be a bit too yellow. Uh, uh, it's good for a filter, but for what we're gonna be doing, which is more streaking type effects, maybe not too good. This is uh, UN white. I don't use pure white that often. I use this off white, which um, is a bit more controllable or it's not a stark let's just put it that way it it works quite well it blends quite well and this one may be buff I don't know anyway it's like a muddy dusty color it'll create a dusty type filter and streaking so got four of the lights which represent dirt dust and possibly um, a, a further tint and then we've got the darks and the darks we um, we have to be sparing with them because uh, they tend to they, they've got big power in that they'll actually sort of defeat a lot of what you can do in previous weathering steps because the dark tint um, really uh, overlays previous color tones and variations but we're going for the traditional uh, burnt sienna and this is uh, Absalon Engine Grease. It is one of my absolute favorite oil paint colors. I just love this dark, rich tone. Um, this needs to be used sparingly as well. Now to get these out of the palette, <laughs> it's gonna be a bit of a struggle. You can see I have to like get a knife into them and all sorts of things. Um, it might be time to buy some new ones. That's where these new products really are handy you know a lot of myself included i thought they were a bit of a gimmick at first but just the fact that you don't um have to deal with this sort of problem is is really good but the idea is with these and i will not be doing that and i'm not going to be using them on, on this but you see you see them later on is that they actually come with a brush these are obviously cosmetics bottles and you can apply the brush straight in the model, but I won't be doing that. I want to use what we'll talk about next. And it's it's what we've already been doing. We're gonna basically divide two applicator brushes, two fine br uh, brushes. One's gonna be the dark, one of them's gonna be the light for application of these uh, oil paints. And then at the moment, we've got three blending fading with the uh, raked um shader being my absolute favorite i wonder how much longer that's going to last well after a pretty epic struggle we have got the oils out on the palette uh interesting though okay i forgot to mention something ab tylon why ab tylon uh this was the first sort of brand of oil paints that had uh military type colors if you want to call them that they were um tones that were suggested to be towards armor of course if you're an artist you'll very well know that the basic range of oil paints has every single tone available so uh, you can mix all these up yourself but of course it's a, it's a convenience thing you've got these colors straight out of the uh out of the tube also a note um they're a bit drier definitely i mean look at that. there's there's your your uh, Winsor Newton uh, oil paint, which is always retaining the liquid. You can see it starting to leach out there. As for thinner, we're gonna use the matte effect thinner. I, I, I suppose it's matte effect. I don't know how they do that, whatever it is. Anyways, this, this works, it's great. Um, and then let's talk about the vehicle and we'll start going with this as well. So, what we're going to do, we're going to start again. Let's get some of the thinner out. As that's the primary solvent that we're going to be using. Dampen the brush, the application brush. And then what we do, we can, let's just start off on here. So we've got uh, the two colors and that's where things can get a little bit more 
complex perhaps because what's going to happen is the light colors are going to obviously create strong contrast on the green and then the dark colors are going to create strong contrast on the lighter colors so um, let's bear that in mind let's see how that looks first of all so we just take we're only taking very small amounts of oil paint we'll start off with this uh, what we think might be the buff and let's just start off with some streaking and we'll put a few here and you're going to see straight away how much less visible it is but it, we did have got that dark wash underneath it let's take our raked shader here and start blending these guys out we're going to go for streaks this time so we're just simply pulling this down and we're actually going to bring this out a little bit and make it a little bit wider until we're happy with it this one's more concentrated here towards the bottom so we might just remember with oils we can push them back up so we can bring it back up and again with that one we'll bring that one down and there we are let's look at how much lighter this is on the sandy camouflage color now we've got varied intensities of streaks you can push and pull them quite a bit and also if they're too strong you can start to fade them out a bit you can pull them off a little bit take a dry brush where you don't want it and start pushing it out and that's the first stages of streaking vary the intensity creates more uh, random appearance now let's show you how this way this is uh, a little bit more difficult I think a dark mod is is, is usually better but this um, the, the problem with the burnt sienna is it, it can look very much like uh, rust and we know that the vehicle is not covered in rust whatsoever so we're going to do a little palette here I'm going to mix these together to create a very darky brown with more of this uh, engine grease okay now with these we just need little tiny amounts so let's just start off with a little blob see how subtle we're doing this let's just keep that really small for now so there we are little tiny applications and it's again just a case of blending and uh, you can see this isn't a quick you see those other guys honestly and they just throw the product on the model and uh, quite frankly I think it looks a little bit overpowered I mean you can use that we'll, we'll come on to that we'll, we'll, do other, we'll do other effects and show you how they work but this method here you can just see that how that's worked on the light just got a subtle transparent shading yeah that's what I'm going for and let's um, we talked about the blending properties so we've got the light on there let's hit that with some dark as if some grease or something and we'll do this one instead instead of just starting from the top we'll start off some in the media area so there for instance and see how these remember we're pulling down every time 
So again, dampen out your brush, and this is where using the properties of these oils in that they can blend into one another. So while we're streaking this dark, we're also re-streaking the lighter color that we laid down previously. And there you can see we've got that effect layered on top of one another. The idea is, of course, as well, try and keep your streaks at like directly 90 degrees or basically going straight down. If you start doing this sort of thing, it's going to look a bit weird because uh, everybody knows how gravity works. So that's a little demonstration of the oil. What I'm going to do, I'm going to work the panels. So what we've got to do. Obviously we've got the corpus for vehicle there and we know that we're going to be concentrating on these panels and segregating them out and the other thing we're going to try and do is put a bit of shade in this area down here. We want to get a bit of shade at the bottom. Maybe some shade here, maybe some there, might random it up a little bit and at the back this area is a bit complex uh, with that auto loader, but we'll do something there. And then the bit that I haven't explained is the um, obviously the horizontal surfaces of the vehicle because in theory they don't streak. In some areas they will. I mean that's where you got the transition there on that um, point there. So you get streaks possibly down there. But on top of it, you shouldn't get streaks. What happens really in nature, of course, is that you actually, instead of, um, you know, liquid, because this work, what we're doing, we're emulating the effects of weather, uh, bringing grime down the side of the vehicle. But you can have areas of ponding, uh, basically accumulation of liquid and dirt and whatever in certain areas so in those areas we're going to use slightly different technique and we're actually going to come in and start using the pigments for the very first time in certain areas and then generally I think the, the rule is on here is that you're filtering um, you don't want obvious streaks I suppose you could do you could do streaks in, in a way because you could emulate the vehicle's movement but in essence we really instead we want to uh, create filters of the oil palette weathering on top and the common way to do that is using a uh, stipple technique where we stipple the oils into one another and if you have a look at some of my other videos where I do like oil dot and if you look at my other videos I don't think I really explained anything about the process so Let's crack on, come back, and if there's anything, and we'll see how how the vehicle transforms from this from this state. So we're going to lay down the very first environmental effects.
Okay, let's just have a little recap on what we've been doing. What I've tried to do is weather one side of the turret and the other side is only with those with the base sort of effects on. And uh, I'll start on this side, the most obvious side. You can see I've introduced the streaking, sort of some shading, some discoloration. It's random effects on top as well. Uh, random on top of this ventilation or conduit or whatever it is here. Um, started adding in the sort of first effects in the recessed areas and then on the front as well you can see some streaks as well and to the most obvious thing that you'll see actually is with these smoke grenade discharges there's a filter of dust on top of these and there's none on the other so let's just contrast those two sides so there's the clean side of the vehicle as it were which just had oil paint rendering also we've done started on the rear a little bit much more tricky to do uh, a lot more washes have gone into this area rather than um, trying to do any streaks or anything it's just too difficult and then we've got these effects over here which is what we're building up to you can see the streaks they're quite subtle but they're still visible we haven't got a, uh, a scrap heap which is what some models like to do but it's what we're trying to go for let's continue let me just show you as well the, the fenders with one of them nearly complete and the other one without any real effects on it look at the contrast there between them with the top one I've started to shade in the top where that exhaust is going to be that's just like the base effect this is going to have to be done in about three or four or more layers to uh, create the realistic exhaust but look at the staining the shading compared to the bottom one which has just a few effects added on so that's what we're aiming towards let's continue it's time for another summary we basically uh, have the oils laid down now on both sides of the vehicle with varying degrees of intensity so it's a bit random which is exactly what we wanted still need to do a little bit of work on the autoloader for sure autoloader definitely needs some work now bearing in mind we just used these two colors and uh, check out these other channels which you probably do because they've got shitloads more subscribers than I do but they'll have an entire episode dedicated to uh, exhaust or something like that well I've started doing my exhaust I'm not finished but um, here's the cover of it obviously and this is the outlet and um, here of course is the stain that's starting to get built up underneath and that's just been done with the two oil colours so uh, don't think I can do an entire 20 minute episode on just using two oil colours but um, as you can see I think the point here is that we start the effects early on and we work towards completion with them uh, there's a bit of uh, you can see there I've got straight away you can see the you can see inside there it's a bit glossy if we just keep on blending we can take out the gloss in some places we want a little bit of a sheen to it, it creates quite a nice effect engine deck starting to look a bit uh, let's just say Russian let's <laughs> say Soviet okay it's looking pretty cool it's looking like something realistic with the splatters on it um, different stains 
it's starting to to give the effect that I want. I've started um, shading in the um, tow cable and again that's just oil paints that's all it is nothing special now I think the autoloader could benefit from the technique that I've used on there but I'm not too sure but I'm just going to show you a little bit of this um, a little bit more of the speckle let's just do it somewhere where we're going to get some splashes they're not necessarily going to be oil or anything like that but the secret is basically well there's no secret to it at all come on it's just um, making sure that the let's sort of take this out a bit hold on so I can show you is that the the brush itself has got some thinner on it clean it off on the rag and then put it into the oil and it needs to be just a little bit sort of damp You can of course do this with washers, with oil paints though, because you, you've got the ultra fine pigment, you get these uh, really fine, look at how translucent it is. So we're going to get some, so as boring as it is, sorry I haven't got shit loads of products to show you, I'm actually starting the mod effects as we speak using these oils that we used as I said for the environmental effects just look at this beauty of it here is if you're not happy with anything you can blend it or even better blend that come back with a different colour on top and then uh, you can again uh, speckle on the paint somebody claimed to invent this but I can remember doing this when I was like 14 I mean it's as old as the hills you can see how look at how uh, translucent that is Let's, let me just show you up close how translucent the effect is really subtle very nice and uh, on top of that let's see if this just need to make sure your brush is damp it's just a case of if, if you're not happy with it you think it's a bit too much just do a little pull down and there there you go so uh, and obviously I did that here as well. I've started off with stains and then heavy concentrations and then splatter as well. And we can add mud on top of that. We're going to go on with pigments. We're going to go on with all sorts of bits and pieces here so that the vehicle starts telling its story to the viewer, which is, like I said, what this is all about. But... Um, I think that's enough. I think we've got enough in this episode. Uh, I really want to um, thank uh, Cygnus because he's commenting all the time. And I really big thanks for all the new subscribers. I've seen a lot of more attention on the page. It's really getting me motivated. Uh, but I need your help, guys. I need you guys to feed back to me on what you're what you think of the presentation I'm really trying to improve things and trying to create a quality channel that um, everybody benefits from so that's me and you guys watching it so uh, thanks again and see you soon